Welcome back! In this video we will talk about the container storage interface and especially the relation between Ozone and the container storage interface. And in the previous videos we talked about the AWS uh, SV compatible interface and the Hadoop compatible interface. So what we should do is talk about the CSI uh, from this picture. And the main goal here is nothing more just mount a bucket to a container. So first of all, what is CSI? CSI is the container storage interface. It's a standard to provide a, an RPC interface which can be used by any of the container orchestrator like Kubernetes, Mesos, Yarn. So all of these orchestrator can request some kind of storage and can request to mount the storage uh, from any kind of storage providers. In this case, Ozone. So let's check how does it work. I would like to mount something. How is it possible? So this is a standard Ozone cluster. Uh, in a previous video, we talked about how can we start Ozone Kubernetes. It's exactly the same. We have two additional services, but both of them are Ozone services with some additional Kubernetes uh, magic just to transform the Kubernetes request to CSI request. So here I have the simple Ozone CSI service and this is the, the Kubernetes adapter and let's go to the container inside so I would like to have a shell inside a container ah, and I have one so I would like to mount a bucket so first of all I need a bucket also an SH bucket create and I create it under the S3V volume and in earlier we discussed that if I create something in the S3V volume it will be visible via the AWS S3 compatible interface. So let's create the void bucket. Okay, now it should be mounted. There are multiple options to mount the storage and today the easiest way is just use an S3 compatible Fuse file system. For example, Goofy file system, which is a high performant Fuse file system, which can mount any S3 bucket, AWS S3 bucket, for example. And because Ozone is compatible with the AWS S3, it can mount any Ozone S3 bucket. So let's try to do it. Uh, I need to define the endpoint, and in this cluster, this is just Ozone S3G, the port, and I would like to mount the demo bucket to the slash MNT. And we'll see, this is Ozone S3G0, Ozone S3, oh, there is a dot here, which is supposed to be a colon, ah. Way better. So this is my new bucket is here. So if I do, if I save something to here, uh, lstxt. So here I just saved something in the directory, but it's supposed to be an Ozone bucket. So let's try to check it from the Ozone interface. Key uh, list slash srev slash um, demo. And you can see that we have the file. So the same file can be accessed from the mounted directory or it can be accessed as a via the Ozone S3 gateway or via the Ozone Hadoop compatible interface. So that's very nice, but still I need to remember about all of these comments. So what about creating a simple service which we can which can do these two steps. Create the storage and and mount the storage. So we have an interface which is running here, a service. This is uh, running the Java process and 
Oh, did I unmount it? Not mounted, okay. So we has we have this Java interface and I have a client for this RPC service, which is uh, CSC. So this client can send RPC request and I can do exactly the, okay, let's go back. I can do exactly the same. What I would like to do is just, uh, okay, endpoint, define the endpoint. Mm, in this case, this is running locally under the war run war lib CSI CSI socket. It's almost the same as a port, but it's uh, accessible via this socket. And I would like to uh, call this controller interface, and I have a lot of methods, but it shouldn't be implemented all of them. But the create volume is definitely something which should be implemented by all of the CSI compatible services. So I would like to just uh, create a demo to volume and it's created. Second, I have an other service in, in the service which can mount it. So this is the node service. Again, I have multiple methods and I would use this publish and the demo to supposed to be mounted to the mount. So it's mounted and I can do the same as before. If I save something to here, this is supposed to be visible in the key list SVV. It's demo two, right? Yes, we can see the, the file. So we wrote to the file system and we can see it via the Ozone endpoint or I can use Hadoop compatible file system or AWS S3 CLI. So let's go back a little bit to here. So this is, this is a CSI service. There are three services which should be implemented. The identity service is just some kind of information about the version and the implemented methods and one other service which basically can create the storage and the other one which can mount it. So it's, it's, it's quite easy. And if this interface is implemented, then any compatible container orchestrator can communicate with our service. So let's try to do something for Kubernetes. I'm exiting from this container. I'm stopping this one and going to here. And I would like to deploy a simple Kubernetes application. And this is nothing more just a stateful set. I have a very simple command to watch one directory. And this one directory is a storage. In this case, it's an ozone storage. I didn't do anything. I didn't create any bucket here. I just said, I need a storage. Please give me a storage and mount it. And because the Kubernetes can translate this request to CSI, which can be understood by ozone, it's supposed to be created by ozone. So let's deploy this one. And let's try to start this one again. You can see that this is starting. And I have this container. This is the standard bow output. It's just watching the one directory. So I have the container which is running. And I have a directory which is mounted from Ozone. I can double check it. So if I check the persistent volume claims in Kubernetes, so I have one persistent volume claim. This is actually the object of the request. So this is where we said that I need a storage, please give me it. So bound means that, that the persistent volume itself is created. So if I check the persistent volumes, yes, this is created. And this is the identifier in Kubernetes. And in this specific case, it will be exactly the same as the bucket name in Ozone. So let's go back to the pods. 
this is my test so I'm just going to here and this is the directory so let's try to do it again this is a date okay so I just save the date again and let's go back to an ozone container for example to the storage container manager the only thing what I need in an ozone client and let's try to list the SVV and I need this specific bucket name and I have the date so it works and this is the third case when I didn't create any bucket I just defined everything in Kubernetes and it magically created so this is how Ozone works together with the CSI. There is a CSI service, the Ozone CSI, which implements the CSI interface. And if we, if you configure Kubernetes to use the CSI interface, it will just work. There is an example in the in the Ozone release package with all of the required Kubernetes resources. But yeah, the important thing is that the CSI is the easy part. Creating the storage, mounting the storage. It's easy if you know how can it be mounted. So it's it's not the the CSI is not the hard part. The hard part is the mounting. Today, Ozone support Ozone can be mounted with this uh, S3 compatible file system. You can use any other. It's not just the Goofy. There are two, three, four. There are multiple S3 compatible Fuse file systems, but there are ongoing efforts to create an NFS gateway uh, very similar to the Hadoop NFS gateway which also can be used to mount a bucket and there is another effort to develop a native fuse driver which will be even faster than the goofy approach but actually the structure will be the same but there will be an option to to use the right mounting method so the real tricky part is that how can we mount the bucket and we will have just more and more options and the CSI is just a common interface to do the creation of the bucket and mount it 